Hello, hello, and in today's tutorial, I just want to show you a very quick shader setup that I've been using to do non-photorealistic rendering. It's fairly easy to set up. Um, it's kind of basic, but I personally like the simplicity of it. Um, currently, I'm in workbench mode. Now, there's a bit of a setup in terms of how to get it working, or at least this is my own workflow, where, uh, as we can see, I've been modeling this spaceman. And if I click on a part here, and let's go to the object uh, uh, properties, in the viewport display, I have it set to the color here. So all of these are set in different colors. And uh, now there's a reason for this is because the shader that I am going to show you uh, takes this information. And so we don't have to assign each part a different color. We can save time just using one shader. And that's, that's what I like. So we're going to drag on a new window. Uh, to access that, we'll just go to the crosshairs on the top uh, right, drag it out, click up here for the editor type, and we're going to go to Shader Editor. Once here, I'm going to load up, you'll see the default material here. Um, it should just be something random like this. I think most of these don't have any, or they all share the same one, which is completely fine. We can just call this uh, Master Shader. Oh, master Shader. Yeah, doesn't really matter. And uh, then we're going to go here, click on that, and you can see that there's really nothing here. So let me bring this to Filmic, so we can just take a look here, and you can see, uh, let's put in a light source, just so we can actually see what's happening here. There's the spaceman. No material information whatsoever. And just for a difference, these are the colors that I want to use to inherit, and I've already set them. All right, so, we have no spaceman here. Let's click on the material here so it loads up. I think I was clicking the suit here. Uh, one thing to do too is I'll just select everything like this. Click on this material here. Oh, select everything. Double click A, Control L, link materials. And now everything should be linked to the master shader. And just take a quick look here. You can see that everything is master shader, uh, which is super helpful now. The simplistic thing we're going to do now is we're going to do uh, hover over the shader editor here, Shift A to add. We're going to add something called object info. Now this is simple. <laughs> so with the object info, we'll just drag color to the base color, and now it's all shaded. And this is just deriving from one single shader. It keeps your project files neat. That's cool. We can use this now to start stylizing things. Now, I like to think in terms of um, 2D design or Photoshop. Um, that's why my primary background is design work, and I love using the lasso tool. I love I love using flats and like maybe two tones, three tones max. And so I'm just going to show you how to emulate that. So we have our base color here. Usually in Photoshop, the thing I tend to do is I'll create a new layer purely for shadows, and I'll have that on a multiply setting, and then I'll either have a light color on top to tint everything uh, so it'll be like blue but all the colors underneath will be tinted that color uh, so the values are just, uh, relatively the same okay so we're going to use the shader to rgb and we're going to hook up a diffuse shader like this and now what this does is it just converts light into rgb values so take a look um, well, it looks like there's nothing textured here, but just to show an example, I'll plug in a color ramp, which is my favorite thing to do. And if we drag this up, you can see we can start playing around with this. And now we can start manipulating this. Uh, I all, always advise for play. So you can, you know, start like cranking values like this. You can get a hard edge with a slightly soft edge. You can like bring this up a bit to get some gradation on here. You can have like a little bit of a comic book look to it if you want, where you can have like the core shadow in the middle and have a little bit of a, uh, a nice gradation like this. And it kind of looks like an airbrush look. There's so many things you can do with this. And the only way to find it out is just to play. Okay. Uh, and we can go through here. Each of these things have a slightly different effect with the gradient, as you can see here. So again, I encourage play to see which one you want. I like using constant a lot because it has that very cut out sharp look, which I love and I'm always after. Okay, so we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to add another one in and it's like maybe have it like slightly gray like this. 
Ed. We'll just bring this down so that we bring it up. I just want a little bit of a line here. Again, this is going to be my own aesthetic tastes. Uh, the ratio here is all up to you in terms of what you're trying to achieve. All right, so that looks great. But now, if we plug this into base color, we're not, as you can see here, we're not deriving anything. We can also like, and, and it's also taking the effect of, you know, the specularity and we can change it to some metallic. Uh, you know, we get like super cool stylized stuff. We can also just plug in directly like what we're doing here, where it's it, this won't be affected by the light whatsoever. Uh, sorry, the shader won't affect the overall color, but the light will still affect the values. Okay, so what's the next step now? Well, we have object info and we have color wrap. How are we going to mix the two together? Well, there's something here called the mix RGB node. So if we click on that, mix in the color like this, and if we plug this in, you can see what's happening here. You know, zero full color, this one, mix. So if we plug this in, theoretically, we should start getting shadows. And now this look is pretty cool on itself. Come on, it's really, really cool. Uh, let me see if there's a light source. It's embedded inside my spaceman. So let's bring him out here. Oh, where is... Sun. Where are you? Oh, yeah, there he is. Okay. And you can see you can rotate it around. That's cool, we can do better. So, we have this guy here, we have this man here, or a suit, <laughs> and then we can do multi or color burn or multiply. And now, you can see, that's pretty stylized, eh? Uh, what I like to do is we can use, I think we can use overlay a little bit because it has more of that saturation which I like personally and then you can also tint this you don't have to use the values here like uh, sorry you don't have to use the color here so what I mean by that is if I go back to mix uh, just to show you white this can be any color you want and any value so if I have this slightly like this and if I bring this you know like complementary color like this and if I go to overlay you, know, you can get some really stylized looking things like this. And that's, man, look at that. That's so rad. Alright, so if we go back here, I'm going to keep with the default values because there's something else that we can use to uh, have it a little bit more modular. Uh, so we'll go to low saturation and uh, there we go. And let's bring this back down to dark. And then we're gonna bring this up here. And what are we gonna do now? Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think we can add another mix node here. So these colors are being mixed into overlay. If we drag this down, connect it here and bring like this, now it's gonna be overlaid with this color. You can see we're kind of uh, tinting it this way. And so this is, you're kind of, if you if you come from 2D design, uh, this is hopefully this is starting to look familiar. Just imagine it like the uh, let's see here, like if this was a Photoshop layer, it's uh, you can you can imagine like the top here is everything's being affected, but instead of it being like the top like this, uh, it's more like oh, whoop, it's more like this. So the last iteration you have here is the top layer. All right, so this is kind of cool, but. My secret is I like to use Darken because it kind of like tints everything and it has this, I, I don't know, I just love this look a lot. And let's, we can, you know, really darken it up that way. We can change the color here. Like, I don't know, for me, this, this looks so good. Okay, darken it like this. And then, excuse me. Yes, like that, and then we can add in a light in, I think, or maybe a screen. We'll take a look here. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so light in gives it more of this like Instagram effect, <laughs> or if it was like in a fog or something, you know, like this. So it's, it's taking all the lighter colors. Sorry. What's happening is that the lighter colors are showing through, and it's tinting all the darker colors to the color you have set here. 
And so you can start getting really stylized looks this way. Uh, but if you want it the other way around, I think that's what darken is here. Yeah, it flips it around. But I was looking into maybe getting a screen. Let's see here. So we can get... And now what factor is, is like how much of it is being affected. So right now, it's affecting everything. I don't really want that. I kind of want the screen to be affecting the highlights here. And so what I'm going to do is we can actually create another color ramp and see what's happening here. We can delete that. We can use this into our factor. So the factor kind of acts like a mask. So I'm going to put this here. And now if we take a look at it, it's only affecting the highlights. I'll show you here like that. And this is how I get those like really cool stylized effects. Oh man, that looks so good. All right, I'm gonna do this a bit darker and you can you know, see what else is here. And then you can you know, have something like this, rotate it around here. And what I like about having that gray line in the other area, you can see it has this nice crisp like saturation line that's can create the illusion of 2d but that's something else too like maybe it's getting a bit too personal here like I, I i i don't really believe in terms of like trying to make something look 2d it's just for me it's just um like stylistic licks I, i'm not trying to emulate something and I, it's just uh if it's aesthetically pleasing uh yeah that looks really great here i mean there's so many things we can do with this um what else can we do here? So uh, I know I've seen some illustrations where a lot of people love, love texture. I don't really like using texture because I am i can't tame it. I get too, I, I, I use too much of it. But for those who have a solid grasp in terms of how to tame texture, all you have to do is plug in a noise texture here and it creates like that airbrush look you usually see. So we're gonna add a noise texture and uh, we're gonna mix it in like this you can see it's getting a bit white here so like if i darken it up you can see what's happening like that and again this control says but watch the magic happen here when i plug this in oh crazy <laughs> all right so you can see here this effect but if i crack this up now we're getting kind of like that spattered look and what's going to happen is you can see the texture here and here are different size and not because it's arriving on the scale of the object but there's a quick trick that we can use where it just derives the object of the object and now the scale should be the same and now we're getting more of that nice spattered look we can increase this we can change the detail like this the roughness like this distortion if you really need more of that uh, and then we can also since this is different, we'll have to create another one here and re-plug this in so it has the same effect with the light. And now we can really play up with this. So if I go 50, there we go. It has that nice saturated look, look to it. And let's just hide, select this, hide everything. So you can take a look here and let's change the world to a color. I see it's kind of <laughs> taking an effect of the world here. <laughs> And let's just drag this up like this. And voila. I think this looks super cool. Oh, that looks so cool. And you can add like another light source here. Light, point light. Uh, crack this bad boy up a bit. Like that. Got some stylized renders this way. Um, and the good thing about this too is now you can either change the colors here so you know we can you know change something else like oh I want this to be that's kind of neat and then let's say ooh, very retro just kind of like rotate this around until there's something nice I like anyway I'll, I'll be here forever playing this hopefully uh, yeah you've learned something so like for a quick overview Remember to set the object 
color in the viewport display so object properties viewport display color because what's going to happen is we're using this information to create a master shader through the object info down here uh, and just to recap if we just plug this in directly to the surface all of this information is stored in this object info to color what we're doing here is just manipulating the shadow color and how it interprets this and i've set this up in a way where it's like um a photoshop file in terms of how i approach color so uh, remember the key thing is the shaded to rgb remember to plug in a shader to, uh, beforehand so it knows wh what to convert and then it's just a series of color ramps I like using constant to play around with other things if you find something cooler. I mix in the object info of the color with an overlay and so that the gradient and the overlay look like this. Uh, we've added the noise texture so it looks like that right now. Uh, if I go into ease and drag this up and down you can see there's a bit more texture like that. All right, hopefully, yeah, make some cool stuff. See ya.